OK, hi there. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the essentials of what you need to know about cost push inflation. Cost push inflation is when businesses experience an increase in their operating costs. And uh, not always, but typically when that happens, they tend to pass on some or all of that cost increase to consumers in the form of higher prices at the retail level. They do that to try to protect their operating profit margins. Now, cost push inflation is mainly determined by supply side factors, particularly in the short term. Uh, for example, an increase in unit labour costs, that's labour costs per unit of output. We'll come back to the data on that for the UK in a second or two. Businesses might also experience an increase in the world price of key components, uh, raw materials. A business might have to pay more if it's a printing business for its paper. A construction company might be facing higher costs for imported glass and rubber and cement and steel. A food manufacturing business might have to pay more for their imported foodstuffs from overseas. Linked with this, uh, and this is a key one that, that students often miss out, but cost push inflation can also be caused by a depreciation in the external value of the exchange rate. Uh, that causes an increase in the price of imports, uh, including semi-manufactured goods, etc., and component parts. And governments can sometimes cause cost push inflation if they increase, for example, the standard rate of VAT, value added tax, or if they decide to shift to an increase in environmental taxes, perhaps increasing or introducing a carbon tax or, uh, or setting a higher minimum price, for example, for carbon pollution permits. So those are the main causes of cost push inflation. Obviously, you want to draw an analysis diagram to, to help you get those top marks in the exam. So let's just put in an, an ADAS diagram to help. Uh, I'm, going to show, I'm going to talk about a shift in the short run aggregate supply curve. Here's our initial equilibrium. Now, if there's an increase in costs, for example, a food manufacturing business has to pay more for its imported foodstuffs, then the aggregate supply curve uh, more widely for the economy will shift to the left, an inward shift of aggregate supply, which Keteris Parabus will then cause an increase in the equilibrium general price level from GP1 to GP2, and also in theory, uh, in the absence of offsetting factors, higher prices reduces the real value of national output. We go from Y1 to Y2. So there's your standard cost push inflation diagram, and that will do nicely. Looking at a couple of factors here, uh, this chart shows unit labour costs for the UK economy since 2009, just as we were coming into in that period of recession. For many businesses, labour costs are their main operating costs. The people that they employ, think about hotels, think about uh, airlines, for example, think about uh, sort of service-based businesses. The main cost is labour cost. And uh, when unit labour costs go up, there's pressure to increase prices. The blue line on this chart shows the annual percentage change in unit labour costs. And just in the last few years, labour costs have been rising by around 3 to 3%, suggesting uh, some cost pressures for businesses. One reason for that is that productivity growth has been fairly weak. Can you see the orange bar here? That shows the kind of the rolling percentage change in productivity output per hour. And it's been fairly flat or negative. One of the great uh, puzzles in the last 10 years or so has been the weak growth of productivity and higher, lower productivity, sorry, increases the unit labour cost if you're paying people more. So that's something to look out for. And I said I'd mention the exchange rate. Uh, a depreciation in the exchange rate increases the cost of importing goods, component parts, raw materials, and that can lead to cost push inflation. Now, that, some of that might be temporary, so it could be a one-off increase in cost in prices. Sometimes the weak exchange rate can persist for some time. Have a look at this chart showing the average sterling exchange rate against the euro. I could have shown the dollar, but I've chosen the euro in this case. Can you see in 2015, 2016, the pound fell quite sharply, particularly after the Brexit referendum. The pound fell by upwards of 15, perhaps percentage points or more against the euro. And that will have increased, perhaps temporarily, 
the cost of imported products coming into the UK. In some countries, uh, there is uh, something called stagflation. So stagflation is a combination of very weak GDP growth and high and rising inflation. For the UK, the most notable period of stagflation happened many years ago, over 40 years ago, in the mid-1970s. I'm old enough to remember it, when world oil prices shot up and inflation in the UK actually rose to more than, well, pretty much to 30%. Now, uh, <laughs> stagflation is more likely when inflation expectations rise after an increase in inflation. So some cost push inflation is temporary. However, there's always a risk that cost push inflation can be embedded in an economy as consumers and businesses come to expect higher rates of inflation going forward. And higher inflation expectations might then cause some people to bid for higher, bigger, better wage deals to compensate and protect their real incomes. So much depends here on the strength of trade unions, their bargaining power, and also the ability of businesses to afford perhaps a more generous pay deal for their workers. There we go. I hope that uh, provided you with a useful overview of the essentials of cost push inflation.